All right, so this is the eight step engineering design process. Uh, my name is Gino Rodriguez. So the eight steps to engineering design. So number one, we have to identify the need or the problem. What does the consumer want or what is the need that needs to be assessed or the problem itself that needs to be fixed? Step two is to research the need or the problem. Um, just doing background research or uh, maybe history on the problem itself and how it could be fixed. Uh, develop the possible solution, step three. Um, so with the developing the possible solution, uh, what, what could work to solve the, the issue or meet that need, uh, select the best possible solution out of your developed solutions from step four. Step five, you need to construct a prototype. Uh, step six, test and evaluate the solutions. Are the needs being met? Um, if so, are, is the problem being solved? Uh, and step seven, communicate the solutions. So uh, let your, your professor or your, your boss or the corporation that you're trying to pitch your idea to know. And then if so, uh, you might need to redesign the, the product that's being developed um, or redesign the solution itself. And then you go back into step one to identifying the need again. So with identifying the need, we ch I chose uh, television remotes. So we needed a way to control the television without having to get up and do it. Uh, you know, a device that you can remotely turn off and on your TV or control the channels and change the volume itself or the input without having to go behind the TV itself and try to mess with the buttons where you can't really get to them. Uh, definitely needed something wireless that doesn't bother the consumer or break their comfortability. Uh, so for background research, I found that the first remote was actually created by Nikolai Tesla in 1898, which he controlled a miniature boat with a antenna and a small remote. Uh, in the 1950s, some of the first TV remotes were created. Uh, they had a ton of issues. Um, early remotes were connected by wires, uh, which people would trip over. Um, they had only one button, so there was really no volume control. Uh, later, they were deemed wireless using light sources from like photo cells to control the TV, but those were interrupted by sunlight or ceiling lights where they would uh, change the TV or change the channel or turn on or turn off your TV by accident. Um, and other TV remotes emitted sounds that could only be heard by dogs or pets and it would annoy them. Uh, one develop or one possible solution is you could develop a wireless remote without the use of sounds or hard clicky buttons or giant flashlights and large wires. Uh, to satisfy the consumer, the remote device could be universal instead of having to be specific to a TV or other digital project. Um, the remote would have to be relatively inexpensive and affordable to the average consumer. Uh, in the early days, they were $120 and $150. So here, just brainstorming um, some possible ideas, drawing out your schematics, drawing out your sketches for your remote design, for your circuit design itself. Um, what are you using? What kind of software are you going to be using? Um, what, what devices or materials would you need? Are we going to be using plastic or metal? Do we need soft buttons? Do we need uh, integrated circuits and circuit boards, capacitors for the batteries themselves, uh, infrared and LED sensors. Um, the buttons would have to be programmed individually through a software. Um, the software you could use could be Arduino. Uh, you would need some soldering equipment so that you could solder the resistors and the buttons themselves to the actual board. Uh, the infrared sensor would interact between the remote and sensors on the TV with the LED light allowing the consumer to know that an input was received. Uh, we would also need something ergonomic and not awkward to hold. So it's crucial to draw out your plan. Um, after you have your plan, you develop a couple prototypes. Um, what works and what doesn't? Uh, is, is metal going to be too expensive? Should we use recycled plastic instead? Um, this is going to be more comfortable and easier to work with. Uh, it's the size of the remote should be relatively small. You don't want anything too big like the picture on the top left where you have this tablet size remote that's just not ideal for the consumer itself. Um, and the remote needs to be easily programmable by the user. Uh, 
Uh, after that, we test and evaluate solutions. So let's say we go with the design on the bottom. Um, we feel like that's the best design. Uh, we use two capacitors for the batteries. We use an LED sensor, an IR sensor, as well as resistors for each button. Um, we only had 19 buttons, so we help save on material costs as well as uh, recycled materials. Um, all the buttons do exactly what they say they do, and the remote can be programmed by holding the minus and power button while the TV is off, and then pressing the power button to match the ID code to the TV being used. So it's universal. If the testing fails, we go back to the drawing board and brainstorm new ideas and have to go back through and test and evaluate again. Um, after that, let's say we have our finished product. Now what? We communicate the solutions. So we reach out to our different corporations or a professor or our peers or a boss and we pitch our idea and you know the remote is universal. It's easy to, to hold and use as well as cost effective. Is the consumer happy with the product? Is the sale of the product beneficial to both the custom, consumer and the manufacturer? Um, the answer is yes. It's fairly cheap to make it. It's affordable to the consumer uh, and the user can sit comfortably and con control the TV without tripping over wires or having to worry about uh, large or la large clicky buttons or their ceiling lights turning their TV on. Um, let's say the client needs a remote that's more visually appealing and that can be used with smart or more modern TVs. What do we do? We redesign the remote. Uh, possibilities of adding more buttons, maybe adding more circuits to integrate Bluetooth for use with other devices such as uh, Blu-ray players or DVD players, or maybe they want a remote control where they don't need to replace batteries every two weeks and they want something that's chargeable instead. Um, and the redesign, we go back to the root. So what is the issue here? And what are we having? Why are we having to redesign our remote? And then we go right back through the next seven steps of the engineering design process. Here are some of the citations I use. And second page. All right. Thank you, guys.